You're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Addressing Gettysburg. And once again, it is time for uh, a quarterly update with uh, Chris Quinn from the Gettysburg National Military Park. We're going to talk about, uh, well, let's see what we're going to talk about. Hello, Chris. Welcome. Oh, happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, pull that mic a little closer to you. Sure thing. Uh, there you go. And uh, let's start with, uh, I'm gonna. well, I'm going to ask you this first, because this is a question I always get, and maybe people just didn't listen to the last time you were on long mm-hmm. enough to hear you answer this. So we'll get it out of the way right in the beginning. Is there any update? Or first of all, well, do it like this. When is Little Round Top closing? <laughs> so uh, Little Round Top will be closing spring of 2022 at the earliest. Same answer as last time. Same answer, yep. Spring 2022 at the earliest. No update on that. No other updates on the laptop. So nothing has changed on that, ladies and gentlemen. Spring 2022. 2022. (laughs) Uh, So there. There you go. There's your little round top answer. Cross that off my list. Okay. Uh, How about the winter lectures? Let's talk about those. Everybody missed them last year. We weren't able to have them. This year, uh, last time you were on, you said that uh, so far, so good. It looks like we're having them. Now that we're getting closer to the winter, what's the answer? Still having them or not? As of today, as of right now, we are having them. Okay. In person. Yep. In the Museum and Visitor Center. Very good. For free. Yeah. Starting January 8th uh-huh. at one thirty. Okay. And uh, today's date is December 21st when we're recording this. So if uh, this comes out after <laughs> things have changed, of we'll course. We'll provide an update. Yes. We'll provide an update. Go to uh, the park's website yep. to find out the latest information at any time. What is the website? www.nps.gov slash G-E-T-T. G-E-T-T. That, that, uh, that spells Getty. Uh, okay. So they start January 8th. Correct. Uh, there's two a weekend. Saturdays and Sundays, yeah, mm-hmm. two a weekend at one thirty. Both at one thirty in one of the theaters in the museum and visitor center. The um, program begins early January and extends all the way through March twelfth. Through March twelfth, so this is a great way to pass the winter. And Absolutely. I'll tell you something: it, it helped me two years ago when I went to every single one of them to record them for you, our listeners. Um, it helped the winter fly by for me because yeah. it was like next thing I know, I've got to go record another one of these lectures. And it was great because, you know, then like a couple of us would go for lunch or an early dinner or whatever. And, you know, because you get to see the same people over and over again. So if you get a chance, ladies and gentlemen, don't wait for us to uh, put them out there. Go out and uh, or come out here to Gettysburg and uh, check out the lectures. Who uh, give me some highlights? What what have we got? Well, first off, let me say that um, the lectures are free, but we ticket them. So you have to show up day of We open at 9 a.m. You can grab your ticket that reserves you a spot. So we do fill up. And and is it uh, limited to 100 people? Yeah, right now we are limiting capacity and we're enforcing mask wearing. So when you go in the Museum and Visitor Center, when you go into the theater for a National Park lecture, you do have to wear a mask. Okay. The reason we're doing that is, you know, I'd do about anything to get the lectures back in person. Sure. And so if managing capacity a little bit, giving people some room to spread out, making sure everybody's masked allows us to move ahead, uh, we're happy to do it. And, you know, uh, listen, folks out there go, oh, I ain't going if I go to wear a mask. Listen, I'm with you. I hate wearing them. I cannot stand wearing them. But these lectures are worth wearing a mask for. That's what I would say. I would agree. Just, you know, swallow your pride and go and and, and, uh, and experience one of these lectures. They're a lot of fun. Now, um, yeah, highlights. Give me some highlights. Oh, who, wow. who, who do we, we got, got coming lot. up? We got okay. a lot of good stuff. I know. Year. I saw I'm some really, good really names on that it. list. So I noticed, though, that um, and I think it might be a problem with uh, the post office, but I noticed our invitation to speak at one of these lectures uh, has not yet arrived in the mail. Did, did it get lost or did you guys forget? Maybe, maybe we'll do it next so year. Or? We're saving you for a real signature event. Of course, you know, the 160th. The, something big, <laughs> something really big. OK. So, All right. When the little round top rehabilitation is done, we'll oh. invite you. Oh, good. So 2040. <laughs> <laughs> I will finally get to do a winter lecture. You'll be retired. <laughs> no be, one will remember. <laughs> I'll have died. <laughs> I don't even know if I'll be alive. How many years is that? Oh, that's like another 20 years almost. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah. but Highlights. Y- highlights, yeah. Well, let me start off with some of the guest lectures we have coming in, which I'm, I'm very excited about. So, a n- couple years ago, 
the National Park Service established a new national park. It's called Camp Nelson National Monument. Mm -hmm. It's in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And it's a, um, a military base that's established there during the American Civil War. It becomes a recruitment uh, station for USCTs, huge depot. It's an amazing story. And the superintendent of that new national park will come and talk about it. So his name is Ernie Price. He formerly worked at Appomattox. Um, great guy, so we're very excited to have him come. Is that where Steve Fan moved to? Steve Fan is over yeah. at Camp Nelson. He's, out He's there. the chief of interpretation there. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're thrilled about that. Oh, so he's you over there. He is my counterpart at Camp yes. Nelson. Yeah. Oh, because he said he's always wanted to be you. Yeah. <laughs> is that what he meant? <laughs> he wanted. Yeah, he you're like shoot higher he, than Chris. <laughs> you're his idol. No, uh, he always talks um, about you. No, he's. Uh, yeah. He says your name with such reverence. Oh, that'll, Chris Quinn. That'll soon evaporate. <laughs> anyway, okay, so go ahead. Um, Who else? We're excited about that. We have Jill Titus, Doctor Jill Titus from Love Gettysburg her. College. Yes. Who's going to speak on her new book, which is about the centennial of the Battle of Gettysburg in the 1960s. So we're thrilled about that. Yeah, we had her on to talk about that while she was still writing it. Mm, yeah. And then uh, about, a I don't know, a couple months before the book came out, I, uh, or is the book out yet? I got the a copy of the book, the book but yeah, out. okay. Yep. I get them for free from NC Press. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so I don't know if I was getting an advanced copy or not, but whatever. So, uh, so yeah, we had her on and she was talking about it as she was writing it, yeah. but now she's actually released it. So we got to have it's her on again. Published, yeah. And and then you just reminded me I need to get on that so that uh, we can release it somewhere around the time that she's doing her uh, talk. Yeah, that'd be hopefully fantastic. that would help it. Yeah, so, so we're okay. very excited about her. Uh, we have Zachary Fry, who's um, uh, formerly of the West Point faculty, right. teaches in Northern Virginia now. He wrote a book about politics in the Army of the Potomac. So he's joining the Republic us. Republic in the ranks. Republic in the ranks. Yeah, mm -hmm. he'll be joining us on January fifteenth. Yeah, um, and he we had to delay him a year because of COVID. So I'm thrilled he's finally able to join us in parks. So yeah, very excited about him. Yeah, we had him on a few weeks ago too. Really? Yes, yeah. yes, very nice guy. Very nice guy. Very nice guy. And the book's a fantastic book. So if you haven't read it, it's it's, it's stellar. Um, Ty Sigil, Ty Sigil wrote Robert E. Lee and Me: A Southerner's Reckoning of oh, the Lost Cause. Yes, yes, yes. A, a very um, popular book okay. about uh, how uh, he was a. Brigadier General in the United States Army and grew up really revering Robert E. Lee. And uh, the book kind of chronicles his early life with how his thoughts on the, the meaning of the war and Lee have changed and evolved over time. Mm. So he'll be speaking in February uh, for the park. And then, uh, you know, as always, we have um, some familiar names. So Jared Frederick. Not who's my a name. Not, not, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Give it time. Uh, Jared Frederick, who's a... Um, uh, professor at uh, Penn State Altoona. He's yes. done a tremendous amount of work, primarily uh, around World War II. Mm -hmm. uh, he um, spent the uh, fall working with us as really kind of a uh, virtual scholar in residence, and he did a tremendous amount of uh, research on the Warfield Farm. So he's going to come and share uh, his hmm. findings. Cool. I yeah, like that. Very cool. Uh, Matt Atkinson is... Heard of him? Yeah, he's... Uh, Apparently, a uh, well-known uh, yeah. ranger at Gettysburg. <laughs> yeah. He is um, going to be presenting on uh, Michael Shara, who, of course, wrote The Killer Angels. Very interesting. And it's, you know, partially an examination of The Killer Angels, but more it's about the man that wrote it and what influenced him and what shaped his kind of literary career. And so that, I think, is going to be— That's uh, going to be cool. I think we, it will be. We, and Matt has never read The Killer Angels. He's never read The Killer Angels really? until now. Yeah. Well, I, I, I only read it I for the first time in uh, 2018. I saw the movie That's first, and then I started reading yeah. history books. I didn't need to read fiction. <laughs> but I, I said, you know what? Uh, I was about to start doing this podcast, and I go, I should probably read this book since what's going to come up, I know. Sure, so, yeah. yeah, that works. I, we just had Jeff Shower on talking about his dad. There's a lot of parallels so here. You keep stealing my content. Is the, I, think the I don't real know, problem. but I no, do it first. So, uh, you know. oh, we've <laughs> <laughs> but I know, you got to plan. You did it first because you had to plan it like way in advance. Um, but yeah, no, uh, Jeff was on and uh, I said, uh, I said, I promise I do want to talk about you, but I'd like your first time to come on being uh, about your talking about your dad because mm -hmm. that really kind of got all of us started yeah. in all of this so it makes sense so he came on and talked about his dad and it was very interesting and uh you're are you sinking in your chair I there 
Uh, that's funny. You're getting lower and lower. I'll have to like go through the video and speed it up so that we can see you go down. <laughs> I don't know what I did. I the it's not I you. It's like, not you. These are terrible chairs. <laughs> they do. They all do it. They all do it. I'm sorry. You just have to pump it up and then <laughs> slowly go down again, or you can just leave it down. It doesn't matter. Oh, I need to be taller than you. Or yeah, you I, just, do. I feel like the interview's you not going do. well. I'm not looking at you. I just noticed, like, you're just, like, sitting there. Like, like a little kid. At the... <laughs> just, like, getting down I thought you were just going to roll with it. You thought I, I got to taller. a certain point where I, I wonder if I'm even in the frame now. <laughs> oh, God, no. I just, we... We put those uh, those stools on our on our wish list. You know, you can make li- wish lists on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. I put them on the stool on the uh, wish list last year when we were building this out. And I'm like, well, if someone's going to be kind enough to get them, you know, I'll get the cheap ones or like thirty five bucks a piece. And it's, now call. I know why. They're- <laughs> Now I know. Now they're priceless because <laughs> this happens all the time. Or the other thing I should warn you about is that people will like you know just like lean back like this and then it'll just flip out from underneath you. So be careful. <laughs> we had Ken Rich almost <laughs> lost his life on those uh, stools there. Okay, I'm sorry. So yeah, you you, you were going on with uh, um, Michael Shara. Michael Shara. Matt, right? Matt, Matt will do Michael Shara. We have um, now. Is it fair? Because the last time. Two years ago, I think Matt did the first lecture that year, mm-hmm. and we had to, they had to turn people away. And then I think you added on a repeat of that at the end of the season. Or that was the plan, but then lockdown, I think, happened. Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, I guess on a Matt, especially because you're limiting it to 100 now, so on a Matt day, you want to really make sure that you get there. Because, yeah, you want to get there at 9 o'clock. Yeah. Great I mean, ticket. honestly, on any of the days, because if it's 100 people, because that place holds what? hundred and. 50? Well, we usually limit it to 155. 155. Technically, it can seat more, but we always want to leave a little bit of buffer room. Yeah, you got to have some wiggle room there in case there's a, you know, stampede or something. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, So, Matt, and then what else? Uh, Uh, Troy Harmon is kicking off the series this year. He's looking at uh, first the 11th Virginia and their experience during Pickett's Charge, so a very Gettysburg-centric program. We have uh, Barbara Sanders, who's our education specialist. She's going to look at kind of myths and legends of the Battle of Gettysburg. Oh, I like that one, and too. John no. Hoptak, mm-hmm. uh, Ranger. He's actually he's doing a unique one. He's looking at fantasy land. Oh, the that's development great. development of kind of that era of commercialism uh, around oh, the battlefield. I can't wait for that so, one. So that would be, I think, pretty, pretty, pretty unique. I have a, a friend of ours uh, who's a listener, but he became a friend. He sent me um, – he digitized old – like 16 millimeter film of when he was a kid of in the land? 70s in the fantasy that's why yeah and it's like now I've never seen fantasy land that was gone before my yeah, time likewise uh, so I don't know from memory what it looked like but to see I mean it had to be interesting to see that place it's this strange kind of juxtaposition right because you have this very um, serious place with its gravity and its you know monumental artwork uh, sculpture and then you have you know to Cinderella, Cinderia, and Cinderella's Tooth castle, Fairy. and yeah, so, but and and literally, like it, it was here at the visitor center where we yeah, are we, now. We built this facility basically on top of where that stood, right? And so some of the pathways through the woods, they're the old, the uh, original pathways. pathways, and you can still, I understand, I don't know if this is true, but you can still see some like ruins, like footings of things or yeah. something out in the woods yep. or something around they're here. Still out there. Um, but so imagine, ladies and gentlemen, you come here and uh, there's where the visitor center now is. There was an amusement park, like a, a fairy tale themed amusement. park. Yeah, like, like 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 Fantasyland and yeah. Disney World. I guess is kind of what it. They had a little lake and um, yeah. all kinds of. I can't train. imagine it. Yeah. So are we in the lake? Is this where the lake was? Cause somebody no, told me I, the lower ground. I think behind where the museum and visitor center is, that real low spot was where the lake oh, was. Oh, the swampy area. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that makes Which more makes sense. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, you mentioned uh, Barb. Yes. Um, Barb it does a lot of uh, the education programs for kids. Correct. And there's something for the kids, too, while the lecture, not while the lectures are going on, but- Right before. Right yep. before. Um, we call it Winter Reading Adventures. And I want to say it starts at 11 o'clock okay. in the theater. And um, it's a if you have young kids, young learners, it's an awesome opportunity for them to connect with the park and with the battle and with the battlefield. But more than that, it's an awesome opportunity for them to connect with history. So they've selected a whole bunch of children's books that they're going to read. Okay. And it's all themed and focused around the idea of 
trailblazing, right? So they're going to look at individuals who blaze trails, okay. whether it be. I'm trying to think of a good example. Um, Jim Martin Bridger. Luther King. Or, oh, okay. <laughs> in Jim Bridger's case, literally blazing <laughs> yeah, Like trail? literally, yeah. Oh, um, uh, you mean like a figuratively blazing figuratively, trail, like Martin like Luther King. Progress. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Martin Luther King, uh, Susan B. Anthony. And there's so many of them. So many of them. And about That's all I can think of. Barb and John Hopsack, who are educators in the park, <clears throat> have um, got this awesome lineup of, of stories and they usually do activities afterwards. So if you, again, you got young kids and you're looking for something to do, Winter Reading Adventures, eleven o'clock every Saturday. And it's also, um, I would say, a good uh, way for your kids to make like-minded friends. Oh, absolutely! Like if you're locals and you come to these things, and, and there's other locals that bring their kids to these absolutely. things. Um, I mean, it's a great way because I mean, and this is something I'm learning through addressing Gettysburg is. Uh, you know, we, we do these events, people come to them, they come more than once, you start recognizing each other and friends are made and people do things outside of addressing Gettysburg now and and uh, um, they all say, you know, I don't know any people who are as nerdy as I am. So this is great that you do this because now we get to meet other people sure. like that. So why not start them young with that? Like introduce them to other kids who might be interested Absolutely. in history. And like I'm telling you, if they're whether you get it or not doesn't matter. If they're interested in history and they meet at Gettysburg and they're local and you can bring them to play at Gettysburg, eventually they're going to learn. They're going to want to learn more at Gettysburg. Well, that's the idea, right? You spark yes. an interest in, yes. in further learning. Spark it, and, and, spark and it. Barb and John are very good at making it both informative and fun for the people that attend. You really do have a great team of interpretive guides here at Gettysburg. We do. I don't want to put any other parks down, but I mean, and I haven't been to them all, so this is very unfair for me to say, <laughs> but I would say that we have the best in uh, the uh, the United States. Well, you that's, know, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm proud of the work we do. <laughs> uh, we have a great team here. But, you know, honestly, I look at what other parks are doing. Um, and we have, we're, we're, I think we're at, at a very fortunate point in history, and I'm speaking in terms of the National Park Service doing public history at Civil War battlefields. Okay, there are some excellent individuals out there doing really great work. Yeah, so I think of folks um, uh, down at uh, Fredericksburg, Spotsylvania. Of course, John Hennessy, uh, the former chief historian, just left. But you got young people like Pete Moggle who works who works there, does a great job. Frank O'Reilly uh, is amazing at Appomattox. Their chief of interpretation, uh, Beth Parnitza, is fantastic. Uh, you look at Reconstruction National Historical Park down in the Carolina. Uh, they have a guy named uh, Chris Barr and Rich Condon who do wonderful work. Wonderful Rich work. Condon is great. You just yeah. Guys. And then um, you know, even down the road at Antietam, Keith Snyder, who's basically my counterpart there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Brian Barris, some other folks. That, we're very fortunate. We have a wonderful cohort of public historians working at our Civil War battlefields. No, yeah, of course. But, I mean, like I said, ours is the best. But <laughs> but that's just uh, pride of home, I guess, sure. or whatever you want to call it. But, yeah, so January 8th is the first one. Yes, sir. Goes till March. March 12th. March 12th. Any of the Saturdays or Sundays in that time period closed, like where we're, we're not going to do one for some other reason. There's a holiday or something like we that. We have. So the, the weekend before March 12th, uh -huh. um, I believe that we just have – a Saturday lecture. We're saving that Sunday in the event of snow. Reschedule. Oh. Rain date. Okay, gotcha. Which always happens. We always cancel one. Right. Snow, rain, so. rain date or... Snow put, date in our case. Or snow date yeah. or to put the person whose invitation you the, forgot. The, yeah, the, on. the address in Gettysburg yeah. all day. I don't know what we would talk about, but I appreciate being you invited. Could pontificate. Yeah. You could pontificate. We well, could I'll recreate just, this exact set. I'll bring in it in. We'll bring... <laughs> We'll bring it Sinking in we'll and, all. <laughs> and we'll just talk to the audience. There you go. How do you like that? I like that. We'll just interview it's the a audience. Facilitated dialogue. Yes. That's what we call and it. We'll, and, and we're going to talk about Gettysburg. The like the it. topic is going to be why Gettysburg. We've done two shows on that topic. Why, why Gettysburg? Gettysburg. And um, <clears throat> I have listeners send in recordings yeah. of why uh, answering that question, and um, and it's people love it. Yeah. For some, because they love to hear that they're that other people are just as nerdy as they are, yeah, or get the same. So, are you asking visitors why am I interested in Gettysburg? Or it's why the interpretation the is up wow. to you. That's why it's such a brilliant it's question. Deep. That's really it's deep. a very deep question, and I have to say, I can't take credit for it. My my best friend said you should do this, and why get it? Like and it. It's it open ended. Great idea. Totally open ended. Because sometimes I used to ask 
uh, every time a guest came on for the first time, that would be the first question I would ask them. Why Gettysburg? Mm -hmm. And then they would all, everybody would have, a, most people have some kind of a spiritual answer, mm -hmm. like something, I came here for the first time and Spoke it did to something me, yeah. to me, you know? Some sort of transformative uh, yeah. alchemy then occurred. Yeah. <laughs> but then other people... Um, I guess the more bookish types will will give it like well there are ten roads that lead into ten, like they'll give a very like <laughs> academic answer which is why I like the question yeah. so I think maybe that's what we should do for the winter lecture why get his I like I'll it. just I'll just sit there with a table and I'll uh, interview people uh, in the audience and it's audience participation. We're going we're gonna to pencil that in for 2023. <laughs> I promise I won't curse. We're gonna pencil that in. <laughs> It'll be family friendly. I, I promise. I swear. But yeah, you think about it for next year. Uh, okay. <laughs> There's um, a, a new temporary exhibit, but you don't want to tell us details. You just want to let us know well, that there is one. Yeah. So we're working hard uh, with the Gettysburg Foundation on creating a new temporary exhibit for what we call the Gilder Lehrman temporary exhibit space and um where is that is that in the back by the bathrooms there no so if you um go into the museum and visitor center right uh -huh. mm -hmm. go through the little rotunda there you have uh -huh. the glass doors that lead to the main galleries right and then there's a hallway to the right of that and when you exit through the main galleries you you exit into that hallway oh yeah 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 and it'll be right in front of you it's a little alcove okay it's a little alcove yeah so we're working on developing a new exhibit for that i think it's going to be fantastic um, then we're also working with some with the foundation. On when some, will that be ready? Um, summer of 2022. Summer. Okay, so this is all good. Good, yep. good, good. Summer so make your summer plans. And then also in the summer of 2022, uh, we're working with the foundation on some special events around the battle anniversary, which, again, I can't really talk about. Well, it's, plans it's are either. still being finalized, but right. um, what I would say is there's a lot to look forward to at Gettysburg this, this year. Good. And this isn't even the 160th. Not even I the can't 160th. imagine what you guys have up your sleeve for that. yeah. I know. That's going to be great. <laughs> I mean, sure, the 160th is going to be like a blowout, right? Well, I mean, we always try to commemorate appropriately um, these are we, special are, anniversaries. Are you doing a, like a walk across Pickett's Charge? Is that an annual thing or is that just that one year for the 150th? Remember you had the like a big all one? The, yeah. That that was I think just the one oh. for the one. Should do it every ten. Oh, I'm gonna jot that down. Jot too. that down. Pencil <laughs> right that. Right after in. the Why Gettysburg. <laughs> I could do another topic if you don't like that one. <laughs> you tell me. Um, okay, and then <clears throat> then there's another lecture series that you're looking to bring back for the summertime. Yes. You want the name of it, or do you remember what not I'm talking about? Not ready to talk about, about it. Are you not ready <laughs> not to talk? Yeah, that's the but special that's, thing that we're doing with the foundation. So there's two things: there's the lecture or the uh, the, the, the gallery, the gallery exactly. and then the secret thing that we're not supposed to talk about. So there's two things that are coming up this summer that are going to be new, and we'll of course yeah. let you know when it's closer to the time. Absolutely. Very good, Chris. That is all I wanted to know. Right. Is there anything you want to share? No, I appreciate, uh, appreciate you inviting me to chat a little bit about the lecture series. Always enjoy it. I promise, I promise next time you come on uh, for the spring, we will have a proper I'm, stool I'm for you. i my own chair now. <laughs> or you I'm can do my own that. stool. <laughs> or you can do that too. It's up to you. Whatever you bring my own podium. <laughs> put it here. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. And I'm sorry I coughed in your ear, ladies and gentlemen, but sometimes it just happens that way. Well, thank you all for listening, and we will talk to you next time. Our hearts so stout have got a stain for sages known from whence we came. Wherever we go, they dread the name of Gary Owen and glory. Instead of spot, we'll drink down hell and pay the reckoning on the nail. No man for death shall go to jail from Gary Owen and glory. Instead of spot, we'll drink down hell and pay the reckoning on the nail. No man for death shall go to jail.